solar panel icon lit up. So it is sending juice. There we go. Now I have it pointed more in the sun. The sun's pretty low in the sky right now. But you can see it is indeed working. To 12.8. 2.6 amps right now. Not bad. Alrighty, look at this rain. Woo, see how it's holding up. Mm. Pretty dry down there. Nice. So it is a very rainy day and my solar panels are not producing very much right now. So I wanted to demonstrate how my battery bank works uh, when the panels are not producing, uh, such as during an overcast day or at night, I can roll the solar stroller into my workshop and hook it up to a much larger battery bank. Uh, this battery bank will help store the excess power. Uh, it will also help me store it longer term. So what I have here are nine batteries. Uh, these are the UPS batteries that are identical to the one that's on the solar stroller itself. Uh, so I got a batch of 10 of them from the transfer station. Um, one of them's on the solar stroller, nine are sitting here. And I have them all wired up in parallel. Um, so that means that all of these together are acting like one big battery. I have a cable connected here uh, going from the far ends, the cathode on one end or and the anode on the other, or the positive and the negative on either end of this battery bank. So again, this is acting as one big 12 volt battery. Um, all of the amp hours or the capacities of the batteries are adding together. They're all connected through this one cable. Uh, if I use my multimeter, I can test, since they're all wired in parallel, I can test any one of them uh, or across any of them and I'll get the same result. Across, say, these two, 12.4, 12.41, or we can go a big range like that, say 12.4. Now, all of them are hooked together through this one cable, so if I test this cable, I'm going to get the same thing. And again, 12.41. The solar stroller is currently sitting at 12.8, 12.9 volts. You can see it and uh, producing 0.2 amps, which is basically nothing. You can see also I've added this bit of Tupperware around it just to uh, cover the terminals and give it a little bit more rainproofing. I have the cover for this piece here that I can put on if I want to. It's not working terribly well. I think I'm gonna rethink that aspect of it. Uh, you can see that the solar stroller is currently at 12.8 volts and the battery bank is at around 12.4 volts. So when I connect the two here, uh, we're gonna see the solar stroller immediately drop as excess energy starts to discharge into the battery bank. So I'm using the single battery on the solar stroller to charge the bank of nine batteries that's on the floor here. So here we go. Okay, so there it is. The solar stroller has dropped to about 12.6 volts. And the battery bank is 12.45. So it's gone up a tiny bit um, as energy starts to flow through it. But if I let this sit here for many hours, like overnight, then the two will start to equalize. So uh, usually I'll leave this overnight hooked up like this. The next morning I'll come back and the solar stroller and the battery bank will both have the same voltage. Okay, so now I want to explain how I actually use the energy that I produce through the solar stroller. Well, the solar stroller charge controller, let's say that again, <laughs> 
The Solar Strollers charge controller uh, has two built-in USB ports uh, that will output uh, USB power. So I will use those to charge a battery bank like this. And this is just something you can easily buy. Um, I think this one costs about 30 bucks. And what's inside of here are five of these. These are lithium ion or lithium polymer uh, battery cells. These are the 11865 LiPo or lithium ion polymer uh, cells. And these are used in all sorts of uh, older uh, laptop batteries, uh, things like that. So they're very cheap, easy to get. So that's how this thing can be so cheap because it's using these very cheap components. Uh, so again, there's five of these inside here. And this thing I can just charge off a USB. And then from here I can charge my other devices um, you know, my phone for example. The charge controller has USB ports right there. I've got a regular micro USB cable plugged in. And so I can just charge my battery bank right like that. There it is showing the battery bank charging up. So I can do this while it is hooked up to the larger battery bank uh, or not, either way works. And oftentimes if I'm actually producing solar power, I'll just tuck this little battery in right here. And so it can, sit there and charge while the solar stroller is out in the sun. Since there's a second USB port, I could also be charging a second battery bank simultaneously. So I also want to point out that all of the interconnect wires I he have here on my battery bank, including the long cable here, this is all 10 gauge stranded wire, uh, which is not terribly large. And right now, all I'm using the system for is trickle charging small batteries like this. And then those batteries I use to then trickle charge my phone or other devices. So right now, the load I'm putting on this is very small. And these wires are more than up to the job. However, if I wanted to use a system like this to power a much heavier load, like say, let's say I was trying to run uh, the air compressor or a fridge or something like that, then I would use much thicker gauge wire like this. So, you know, this is probably six gauge. I would even go up to maybe four or two gauge uh, if I really wanted to put a heavy load on this system. But for trickle charging, 10 gauge is totally fine. Uh, the stranded cable is flexible and it's easy to work with. The gray cable you see here, that is 10 gauge uh, solid core and it is outdoor rated cable. So it is UV resistant. And that's important since the solar stroller itself is going to be outside. The battery bank is not outside and so it does not need outdoor rated cabling. I also want to point out that the battery bank just sitting out in the open like this is temporary. Um, right now, you know, I could touch any individual terminal like that and it's not a problem, but if I were to touch both of those, I would get a shock. And you can see these batteries have this little, uh, this little tab here so that you can't accidentally close that connection with the tool or something like that. So this is not the safest setup uh, what I will be doing is building a battery enclosure similar to this one. All right, this is for the two panels right there that are fixed and sit outside. So this is just a simple battery enclosure that I built out of some old cabinets that we tore out. Um, you can see I've got a little computer fan in here. If it's a really hot day and I feel like it needs to cool down. Just have that wired right here to the charge controller. I can turn that on and off. I also have this set up with this cable, right? So this is a 12 volt female port. Uh, it's got its own little inline fuse, which is never a bad idea. It is connected to this battery bank. Uh, and so I can plug in this simple little AC adapter. All right. This is one that's just meant for your car to charge a laptop, something like that. So I can just go ahead Plug this in, hard to do with one hand, but there we go. Now you can see that comes online. And from there, I can charge any sort of AC uh, devices I want, such as just standard household batteries to this charger or my shop batteries down here. So I will be building a similar setup with an AC inverter and a battery enclosure for that battery bank.
five. 